Uh, so good morning. This is day seven. I'm so proud of everyone. Um, so there are a few of you that are making the lives. Um, Emmy is not from here. So that is impressive. She's making this from her time zone. Um, but just as a reminder that there are people who are committed to this program who are joining us from um, other time zones. And so just holding them in our space um, as, we're, as we're doing this, because that's really amazing. It's amazing that there are people who are um, not even in this, in this same area who are waking up and doing this. Kristen is another one. She's doing this from her time zone, which I think might be ours right now, but isn't always. So just feeling really um, connected across all timelines right now. Today is day seven, and we are going to talk about how to luxuriate in this practice on day seven, because seven is all about expansion, and it's about um, the bounty that practices bring. So I want to talk a little bit about that. And um, I know there are a, a few questions that are kind of have started coming through. This is about the time I would expect that, but I'm gonna save those for our Q&A on Friday. So there's a live Q&A at 9 a.m. Uh, Phoenix time on Friday. So if you have any questions, um, if you wanna share experiences that are happening for you, that is going to be a great time to do it. And we're going to, um, we're going to record that. That will not go on the YouTube. That will only go to an, in an email to the participants who are committed to this. So that was a question I got that I wanted to clear up. If you come to the live Q and A, it will be recorded, but it will not be going on YouTube. So full disclosure for that. Um, so anyways, that's the business side of things. We are going to do a practice this morning that is about luxuriating in the sunrise because it's day seven. We only have to do this a couple more times. Just repeat day seven, you know, those seven days a couple more times. Um, so one of my favorite practices, as I call it, eye washing, and this is where you're going to look to the Eastern horizon and you're gonna visualize the sun coming in as different light waves and washing down your body. And I'm gonna guide you guys through this process. But I wanna talk about right now, just some self-care things that we can do as our bodies are starting to make this transition. Because at day seven, if you guys have been getting up for sunrise, a lot of you are probably starting to notice some interesting things happening with your sleep, or with your um, energy levels or with your eyes. I know I've had a couple of you talk to me about your eyes. <laughs> so, you know, this is a big transition that our body is making. It's a, it's a chemical and an electrical transition. So it's a lot. So I want us to also like really honor the work that we've been doing. So before we do our little guided meditation this morning, we're gonna start with just some um, very conscientious clearing of the buildup that can happen in our lymphatic system. So I'm gonna guide you guys through a little um, self kind of stimulation and massage that I do of my head and my face to help release the lymphatic system. This is really important because the lymphatic system is responsible for clearing some of these hormonal byproducts out. And a lot of us um, can have lymphatic systems that aren't maybe pumping and flushing. The, the lymphatic system doesn't have its own pump system like the cardiovascular system. So um, unless you're doing certain types of movement or your lymphatic system is really trained to know how to move with the body, a lot of times the lymphatic system gets a little sluggish. And this is very common. It's just our lifestyle, you guys. Like there's no shame. Like 
we we're in a, a consciousness revolution and that's very different from any point that we've ever been in this design in this model of human um so our bodies will adapt but we just haven't adapted for that yet right so we're not climbing trees and jumping off things and like running from lions the lymphatic system was designed to work with those movements so because we don't have that our body hasn't quite we're not like in model 4.0 or whatever yet so we're gonna do some self stimulation of that you might really notice this is after I do this, I always notice like how good under my eyes looks. And I'll actually notice that I have hooded eyes. My eyes will lift a little bit um, because a lot of like a lot of the things that we see in our face that we associate with aging are actually inflammation. And this is going to help with the inflammation. So we're going to start with this nice little relaxing lymphatic self massage that I'm going to guide you guys through. And then we're going to go straight into the eye washing. OK, now. It's not the hugest deal if during the during the tapping and the massage, you close your eyes for a second. That's okay. It's sometimes it just feels really good and you want to go inside for a second. So I'll cue you like I'll just remind you to gently open your eyes and then especially for the eye washing, we'll have our eyes open for that. So just wanted to give you guys sort of a sense of what was coming your way. And like I said, please, please, please bring any stories, um, questions, comments, concerns to Friday. I would love to answer those live and just get to interface with all of you just as like an energetic exchange to keep you motivated keep you present and give you that energetic support. So I'm going to actually switch the way I'm sitting and then I'm going to take my glasses off. So you guys, I will not be able to see the chat box. Um, so that doesn't mean don't put anything there. It just means that I might not see it for a second. So. Go ahead and get comfortable wherever you are, if you can. And again, if we can slightly orient to the east, that's great. If you can't, no worries, you're outside with naked eyes. That's all that really matters. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna come to the very center of the head right here. And we are going to be using the fingertips, right? So my hands are gonna look like this. I'm using my fingertips. And especially on the top of my head, I'm tapping with a good amount of force. Like I'm not hurting myself, but I'm not just like lightly tapping, right? Like I'm trying to get a little bit of like sensation there. So we're just gonna start tapping at the top of the head right in that center point. And just breathe as you do this. When we do deep breathing, while we do anything, it is a subconscious trigger to the mind and to the body that we are safe. This is why we yawn, actually. Yawning is a way for the autonomic nervous system to reset itself. You can't really yawn um, when you're in the middle of fight or flight. It's something that we do to reset. So a lot of times after trauma, people will start yawning. It's very common. Awesome. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to take that tapping motion and we're just going to start to bring it down towards the ears until we're right above the ears. We're just going to tap right above the ears. Some of you might notice some sensitivity here. I always have a little bit of sensitivity here. That's great. Don't tap hard enough that it hurts, but tap hard enough that you're feeling that stimulation and then as you can tap harder. Um, again, never so hard that you're hurting yourself, but we don't want to shy away from tension here. We want to like actively engage it. Good. So now we're going to come back to the top of the head and we're just going to draw down. So just drawing down your, again, you're putting a good amount of pressure here. The skull can really take a good amount of pressure. And we're just drawing down, sweeping down with our fingertips down towards our ears and then back just a little bit. Good. Awesome. So now we're going to be using our two first two fingers on either hand. We're going to start at the inner corners of the nose right here, the corners of the inner eyebrows. And we're just going to come up and then we're going to trace the eyebrows over. And then you're going to go up into the hairline. Okay. And then just go all the way back until it feels good. I like to go all the way back. So it's almost like we're drawing like a little swoop here. So we're gonna start at the inner corners of the nose using pretty good pressure. Again, not hard enough to hurt yourself. Trace the eyebrows. That eyebrow line, get to your temples here, come behind and then swoop up, going to the back of the head. This should feel really good. I mean, it does for me anyways. 
So again, inner corners of the nose, eyebrows, following the eyebrow, coming down to the temples and then swooping back up. Awesome. We're gonna do that two more times. Again, really tracing that eyebrow bone coming up. And if you can meet in the back of the head, that's kind of ideal. Good. Awesome. All right, so now we're gonna come a little bit lower on the nose. So we're gonna find the point where our cheekbone is. We're gonna follow that in to that point on our nose. And then you're just gonna swoop under the cheekbone until you get to this point right in front of your ear here. You wanna find that tender point. There should be a tender point for most of us. There'll be a little tender point in here. So we're starting right where the cheekbones come in. We're gonna scoop over to that tender point, right? And we're just gonna hold, hold it there for just a second. Don't worry, we're gonna gather everything down. So right now, finding cheekbone point coming together, scooping, good coming right to that tender point. I'm gonna do that a couple more times here. Scooping, coming to that tender point. Let's do that two more times. This one always feels like a big one to me. Scooping, and then getting to that point. Do that one more time. Scooping and coming to that point. Awesome, good job, you guys. So now we want to clear this because now we've started to bring this inflammation to these points. So now we want to bring it down. So you're going to turn your head slightly to one side. You're going to look a little bit up. You're going to take those two fingers again. I want you to find that tender point behind your ear. For most of us, there is quite a tender point there. Our lymph nodes tend to be swollen here. So you want to start as light as, as it as it is required that you're feeling something, right? So start light. And then as you can tolerate it, begin to add pressure and you're just drawing down. You're literally just drawing down the neck like this. So using your two fingers, you're just gonna find that tender point behind the ear and you're gonna draw down. There's a natural progression here. You're gonna feel it because it's gonna feel really, it's gonna feel tender and then it's gonna feel good. We're gonna do this about 20 times total. So we've got about 14 more to go. If you're going at my pace, after this one, we'll have five more. And you'll start to notice it start. It doesn't feel as tender. Good, I think this is the last one. I'm not great at counting, you guys. We're gonna turn our heads. What we do on one side, we're gonna do on the other side. So we're gonna do the same thing. Chin looks over the other shoulder, tilt slightly up, find that sensitive point behind the ear and begin to draw down. Now for me, one side is always more inflamed than the other. So this side for me isn't quite as tender. So I can start with a little bit more pressure. I also don't feel quite as much release as I draw down. For those of you who are actually doing this with me, trust me, you're gonna freaking love this because you're gonna feel so good after. If you don't already, I already just feel so much better. Like my face feels so good right now. And we'll say we have 10 more on this side. If you're moving at about my pace. I can just like see the moon hiding over the top of my house right now. Hello, moon. All right, let's say five more. 
this is an important one. That's why we're spending a good amount of time here. Awesome. Okay. So now what have we done? We've swooped back and we've swooped down, right? So we're helping naturally get to these lymphatic points where they, all of the lymphatic connections sit right here under the collarbone. We also have one back here in the back of the head. So now we want to stimulate those. We want to stimulate those to release. So this is going to be more of either a tapping, vibrating, or pulsing motion. That's going to kind of get these big areas started. So the first one we're going to do is we're going to just take our fingertips. We're going to trace the occipital ridge back here behind our head. So you want to trace where your kind of the bowl of your skull comes together to where your spine is. Okay. And you just want to trace that towards the center. You want to find that kind of like nice spot where it meets kind of in the middle there. And then we just want to do some light pushing. You can turn your head a little bit. Think of like pulsing massaging motions back here. You can kind of like rub, pulse, push, just really like get that area where the, the bucket of the skull meets the spine. You just want to do like a nice rubbing, pushing, massaging. You can also do tapping back there, but for some reason, this region of the body to me always seems to like just pressure. It's like that, that seems to be what stimulates it for me. But if it's not working for you, try tapping. But I like to do just like a little pulsing kind of rubbing thing back here. And this one actually turns on pretty quickly for us. This is probably one of the ones that works the most in the lymphatic system because it's at that point where the spine and the brain meet. So it's constantly being jarred as we like walk or sit up or stand. So, all right. So then we're going to come down because we then again, we brought it down to this collarbone point. So I want you to find your collarbone here. We're going to tap just above the collarbone. There should be like these beautiful little hollows right here. We're going to go ahead and take our fingertips again. We're just going to tap into those hollows. Now, this can be a very sensitive point. We're going to start on the inside of the hollows towards your neck, and then we're going to come under the hollows. Okay. Inside the hollows towards your neck, use very light pressure to start. This can be very tender for people. And we can just tap this entire area. Again, we're just teaching this center to pump. We're just simulating it to pump. So inside the collarbone towards the neck, be very gentle, use light pressure. We all know us ladies, especially the skin is very delicate skin. So we're gonna be gentle. When you come under the collarbone, I don't know if you guys can see, when you come under the collarbone, we can use much more pressure here. And in fact, it kind of feels good. And you can just go back and forth between those, whatever feels good and right to you, okay? I can feel I've got a lot of stagnation down under here. So I'm gonna spend a minute here. Again, these, these pumps, once they get stimulated, tend to turn on pretty quickly, because um, we do use our arms. You know, it's not, that neck lymph node tends to be the one that gets stuck the most, because most of us don't have to chew and use our mouths the same way we used to have to. take just another second here. All right. And then full disclosure, this last one will wake you up. So last one we're going to do, you have a huge lymphatic system right under your armpit here. Um, so you're going to come, you're going to find your armpit, cup your armpit. You're going to drop down for those of us, uh, who have breasts that are sensitive, just make sure you kind of, you're not right on the side, like come a little bit back from that. Um, you're at about the nipple line here, honestly, like as another way to say it. And you're just gonna tap here. And I like to, I mean, I use like a decent amount of force here. Like I, I'm like patting myself on the side. This one is in Chinese medicine, also one of the ones I've seen, like this motion is used a lot to stimulate life force, to stimulate chi. Um, so this one will wake you up. So yeah, I, I get I get like a decent slap going there, but you can go as gentle as you want. I just like this one. I feel like it always wakes me up. It always gets me going. All right, and then we will come to the other side. Again, I do still always just kind of line up where I'm gonna go because 
I definitely had warnings where I'm like, oh, good morning. I was not in the right spot there. Um, you guys are doing great. I can feel it, even though I can't see any of you. I can feel that you're doing great. All right. Very good. So take a second now and just do any last things that feel good to you. We're going to take one minute. So if you feel like you just got to rub those temples a little bit more, that's a big one for me. If you feel like maybe one of the sides didn't get fully drained, you can come back to that. If you were just really digging this, just take a minute here and just do whatever feels right to you. Like you can just massage the jaw. If you have a tight jaw, there is actually a point under your chin here. If you trace your thumb under the jaw and you push up kind of about where your incisor would be, you'll find a really tender point there. You can push that, hold it with as light a pressure as you can tolerate. And then as it starts to release, deepen the pressure. This is a really great reset for a lot of like stress that we have in our neck and our spine. You can do this, right? You can keep massaging whatever feels good to you right here, right now. Sometimes I check the other side. It's normally just one side for me, but. Yeah, that's when I close my eyes. I just noticed myself closing my eyes because it's a little intense. So yeah, always never wanting to hurt ourselves. Always just allowing the body to accept what it can and deepening with the breath. Good. All right. So hopefully you all feel amazing. I can't wait to hear about this. I hope everyone just feels great right now. Um, tell me if you notice any differences in the way that your face looks. I actually really, on the days when I do this, which isn't every day and it should be every day probably, um, I actually notice like a huge difference in the way that like my, my eyelids actually don't droop as much. Like I just notice like little changes in my face and my skin. Um, and I also just always feel great. I'm always like, gosh, why don't I do lymphatic massage every day? Um, okay. So we're going to end this practice with our eye washing. So eye washing, again, we're going to be looking towards the Eastern horizon. If we can, if you can't, that's okay. Outside with naked eyes is great. Go ahead and just find a comfortable position. You should be feeling all nice and good. You should feel that life force moving through your body. We're gonna allow the eyes to softly gaze into the distance. So right now you wanna be looking at something in the distance, even if it's not that interesting, it doesn't matter. And then you wanna try to sort of lightly unfocus your gaze, okay? As you do that, I want you to begin to visualize that the light that you're looking at is looking at you. And in fact, it's seeking you. It's shining through our atmosphere from the sun, refracting and splitting due to water and other moisture in our atmosphere. And it's seeking your eyes with rainbow-like rays. So imagine that, imagine that light shining out from the sun. The, the rays hit our atmosphere. They become fractals of rainbows. And then they enter our eyes. So I want you to start by imagining that the light from the sun, the rainbow beam that you're getting right now is a beautiful ruby red. And as your eyes are softly unfocused towards the horizon, begin to imagine that the light that's coming into the eyes is a beautiful ruby red. And you feel it enter your eyes and travel all the way down your body to the root of your being, bringing in life force, stability, energy, passion, all of those things that red brings with it, connecting down to the root. Now I want you to relax your eyes again, maybe focus on something near for a second, then put, put your eyes back out to the distance, relax the eyes. And now I want you to imagine again, that that light coming from the sun, passing through our atmosphere, fracturing into the rainbow, 
And I want you to imagine that the color that you're seeing is orange. The orange light is now traveling into your eyes, bringing with it energy, compassion, focus. You feel that coming into your eyes, traveling down the body, cleansing and invigorating the body. Good. Go ahead and reset the eyes. You can look at something close, maybe blink a few times, and then we'll bring our eyes back out to the distance, allowing the eyes to go soft, Imagine now that the sun's rays traveling all the way from the sun, passing through our atmosphere, becoming the rainbow fractal. Good. Coming in now, golden yellow. Golden yellow light passing into the eyes feeling a lot of energy with this one, feeling yourself start to wake up, feel the body nice and vibrant. Good. Awesome, go ahead and reset. You can close your eyes for a second, look at something close to you, bring your eyes back out to the distance, relaxing the eyes. Imagine now that the rays from the sun traveling through our atmosphere becoming a rainbow. And this time we have green light. And if you can't see these things, that's okay. Visualizing can just be telling yourself that this is what it is. So don't stress if you're not clearly seeing green. Imagine that green light passing into your eyes. And this goes straight into the heart. You just feel the love that lives in your heart, activated with this green light, washing into your eyes, pulling that energy of love. Good. And now we're going to see if we can call in pink light. So for those of you who aren't familiar, green is the, um, color of projected love. So it's the front side of the heart chakra, but the back side of the heart chakra is pink, which is how we receive love. And a lot of us need help with that. So we're gonna call in pink light. So let's go ahead and reset the eyes. Closing them, looking close, relaxing them back out on the horizon. Now I want you to imagine the light of the sun traveling into our atmosphere, becoming a fractal of rainbows. And that pink light is now traveling into your eyes, soft rose pink. And I want you to feel how loved you are. There are people who love you, including me. I'm sending all of you so much love right now. Just try to allow yourself to feel that. And you can bring your awareness to the back, to your back. See if you can just allow yourself to soften into this pink light. Again, trying to keep those eyes open because we're getting that nice eye wash. Allowing yourself to try to connect to the feeling of feeling loved. And just trusting that these light rays entering your eyes are cleansing and recalibrating. And the last color we're gonna to do today, we're gonna to do sort of like a, a sea blue, kind of um, mix between green and blue, but like pretty light still. So go ahead and blink the eyes close, look at something close, refocus the eyes out to the horizon. And as you imagine the sun's rays passing through our atmosphere, becoming a rainbow fractal, I want you to imagine this sort of aquamarine color coming into the eyes and you might really feel this right in your throat. This is the color of that throat chakra center. Feel that throat start to expand, start to open. Feel the fearlessness of speaking your truth to yourself and to others. Feel the fearlessness of recognizing the truth. Just allowing that light to come into the eyes, to wash down the entire body, to really engage with that throat. That 
beautiful aquamarine. are great so you can go ahead and reset your eyes blink them closed for a second look also in the far and i'm going to invite you to stay here with the sunrise for a few more minutes and call in whatever colors are left to you i did not do all of the chakras because we tend to be um head heavy in our society so i didn't want to call those in anymore i think a lot of us need the opposite balance but if you're feeling really called to you can move through the rest of the color spectrum the third eye being a darker blue um, and then the crown is going to be a purple so you can sit with those if you want and then there's actually a clear incandescent chakra above that one as well so if you feel called to move through those colors in this eye bathing you can go ahead and do that or if any other color that i did not say pops into your awareness go ahead and take a second to do that with your eye washing um, i'm going to sign off and I'm going to finish my practice. But again, I am really hoping that I will see some of you at 9 a.m. on Friday Pacific time for a live Q&A. And I hope that this was a beautiful practice that you feel nice and luxurious in yourself and that you have a beautiful day. Sending you all so much love.